In today's episode, we're exploring two industrial abandonments in eastern Germany. First, we're checking out the abandoned Wanderer factory, one of the original companies that formed the Auto Union, which later became Audi. Then, we're heading over to a long abandoned ironworks that's been turned into a paradise for street art. Join us as we discover what's left of these industrial ruins. first location was the abandoned Wanderer factory. We had no idea what to expect inside, but we knew there was a beautiful Victorian style power plant somewhere on the property. The boards look like they're from various different times, so they were probably just always boarding this place up. Continuously. Does this get us in? This is something. I don't know about the whole place. Unfortunately, there didn't seem to be much of interest on the first floor. It's just as gutted out. It's not any better. At one point, these empty halls were a workplace for over 30,000 workers. The factory began its life producing bicycles, but soon the Von Lutter company expanded to motorcycles, typewriters, and eventually automobiles. During Soviet occupation, the company relocated to Western Germany and the original factory continued producing bicycles as a state-run enterprise. As you can see, there aren't many remnants left behind today. These windows are pretty cool. Of course, there's a chair just chilling in here. Gotta get the chair shot. We were about to head out of this building when we made a strange discovery through a hole in the floor. Yeah, there's quite a few wheels and tires mounted. What are these all doing down here? What are they? Wheels. Is that a light? I don't know. Definitely lights, but look at that. It's so weird. Holy shit. There's so many of them. It appears this building isn't as abandoned as we thought it was. This is the building we really want to get into. The old power plant. But it's really sealed up. I don't know if we're going to get in. These padlocks? That looks really new. Are brand too. new. And they're in these you can things. See they cut the wood here. Yeah, they're in these things so you can't even cut them. Wait, what the... What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Are you serious? They're all... Are they fake? All of these? Are all these locks just fake? Well, we're inside. Look, this is not where you put this attached to. They had us fooled for a bit, so I guess they work. We almost fucking left without just trying to pull on the door. Wow, those are chandeliers. Chandeliers in a power plant. That's what I'm talking about. Wow. 
<laughs> so vintage in here. Too bad there's no turbine left. I love the details in these vintage power plants. Never get tired of them. The controls were probably right here. Like a panel here maybe. Or along any of these walls, who knows. Pull it. Moves a tiny bit. This is how you move the crane because you can see the gear on it. Yeah. It's just slipping on the wheel. It's oh, it is turning it actually. Oh. Yeah, it's not working right. I wouldn't mess with it. Yeah. Not much down here. I can't get over or like think why they designed it this way is they have these chandeliers that hang really low and they look awesome but they have a gantry crane and the gantry crane will hit those so rather than just saying hey maybe we'll make these chandeliers shorter so they don't hit they designed the whole mechanism to pull them into the ceiling when they need to put the gantry crane underneath them just so they can keep their low hanging chandeliers in a power plant stuff has not been done like that yeah. in so long. Now you'll just have huge fluorescent yeah. lights or something and that's it. Hasn't been done this way with ornate industrial buildings in so long and there's so few places like this left. Outside, we found the shells of some Trabants, a vehicle that was manufactured by East Germany while under communist rule. It was notorious for its awfulness and seen as a symbol of how inferior East German manufacturing was to that of West Germany. The body was made of plastic and it had a 25 horsepower engine which took 21 seconds to bring the car up to its top speed of 60 miles per hour. is actually kind of cool looking yeah. with all the paper draped everywhere. It's kind of surreal. Imagine walking in here at night with really dim lighting. You think you're seeing a bunch of ghosts.
floor looks in bad shape. Yeah. Holy cow. This is being reclaimed by nature, that's for sure. There's just a door here, but the frame and wall around it is completely gone. Are you stuck in the web of ceiling tiles? A short drive away from the last location is an abandoned ironworks that's been turned into a street art paradise. People just graffitied swastikas over all the pieces. Really? Yeah. Yeah, even the graffiti has been graffitied. <laughs> I like the paint splashed on the windows, actually. The rainbow. There is definitely some good stuff here. It's just surrounded by a lot of crap. And of course people had to spray paint over it. The amount of high quality street art here is no coincidence. In 2013, over 150 artists from all over the world descended upon this abandoned factory for an annual urban art festival. Since then, however, nothing has been done to preserve the works and many have been subjected to decay and vandalism. It seems unfortunate, but then again, this art was never meant to be permanent. It's meant to decay and evolve just like the walls of the factory they're painted on. There really are two types of people who do graffiti. There's the creative type and the destructive type. Some people like it for the creativity and other people like it for the destruction, unfortunately. <laughs> that looks pretty crazy. It's just all the random junk they found in here. There's a shopping cart up there. Oh, so they probably put everything in the shopping cart and then yeah, raised the, the shopping, shopping cart. Yeah, the shopping cart and then they hung it up. This is basically an art gallery with free admission. I like it. The ironworks itself was founded in the early 1900s, but only operated for a few decades before going bankrupt during the Great Depression. However, production was eventually resumed under Soviet occupation after World War II. The foundry specialized in creating cast iron parts for vehicles and operated all the way until 1996. Today, the grounds are extremely contaminated, making demolition and reuse of the land unlikely anytime soon. This building held an electric smelting furnace and was one of the more recently constructed in the facility. As you might be able to hear, we weren't the only people photographing the building that day.
This looks like one of those ladle things. Spang Bad welcomes you to the cube dimension. Before heading out, we had to make sure to get the most iconic shot of the ironworks. 